Along the shore, the cloud waves break. Tonight's episode of Lost Carcosa. This is a playthrough of the Path to Carcosa storyline for Arkham Horror the Card Game. Tonight specifically, we're going to be playing The Unspeakable Oath, or rather, Return to the Unspeakable Oath, since we're doing the uh, Return to the Path to Carcosa director's cut style for this storyline. Okay, so the story lately. Our investigators Lola and Min They've just returned from their um, their stay at the Excelsior Hotel, where they were framed for murder. Well, rather, Lola was framed for murder, and they uh, they managed to work with the police to uh, catch the actual murderer. As a result, Lola is is haunted by um, I guess being possessed into doing a murder, which is why she has this new weakness here. What have you done? Sadly, this means that this Lola deck has six a grand total of six weaknesses in it now, which is going to be uh, pretty silly if you ask me. Okay. Also, what happened in um, Murder at the Excelsior Hotel? They gained some experience, which I'll go over right here. Lola spent her experience to upgrade her Enchanted Blades to the, in my opinion, pretty amazing uh, level three Mystic Enchanted Blade. It's just very efficient. Um, where the uh, original Enchanted Blade would have three charges, each of which would get, would let her do um, two damage at a plus two to her combat. This one has basically, I call it two modes. She can either deal um, two damage at plus three to combat, do it four times, or I think this is the great part, she can deal three damage in an attack at plus four to combat. That's pretty solid, considering that if she needs to deal with a three health enemy, She's already at a base. She's already at a four. Um, three plus four equals seven to her combat check, and I, I think that's that's pretty good. It's very efficient. I think the mainly what puts it over the top for me is the fact that it can deal three damage in a pinch. So that's pretty nice. Min, however, let's see. She's um, bought a bunch of different things. I decided to go with two copies of the amazing level two shortcut. Um, it's especially useful in in. Uh, in scenarios like the asylum because there's a lot of um, choke points and a lot of places we're going to be moving around a lot in the asylum but i think in general just being able to um, share the benefit of um, of free action movement is pretty solid so we're gonna yeah not only is it repeated and Min needs to use it more than once but it, other investigators can use it as well which i think makes it very much worth it i've also uh spent the remaining xp uh, on one copy of Extensive Research. This one I'm just going to try out. Um, this is an interesting card. It's very, it's uh, seemingly very expensive, but if Min manages to get a lot of cards in her hand, which uh, she seems to have been able to do, um, it'll actually become pretty cheap. And I'm hoping to use this on like a five shroud location or something. Plus it's got Min in the picture. So, I'm, you know, I gotta. Um, and also I realized there's a way to, there's a way to kind of help reduce the cost of extensive research, and that's with um, level one magnifying glass, which I think is this is a very solid card in general because it just makes the uh, super cheap magnifying glass stat buff even cheaper. And um, the real part that we're going to use here to um, synergize the extensive research is that being able to return the magnifying glass to um, your hand means that Min will be able to, okay, if she's at a location that has no clues left, she can return a magnifying glass to her hand to maybe go up to nine cards in hand, then move into a new location and play extensive research. And so the magnifying glass is almost going to like pay her back by reducing the cost of extensive research. There's some natural synergy there, and I'm, I'm pretty excited to try it out. Um, also, I realized I totally forgot to initiate the dark packs in Murder at the Excelsior Hotel. I just completely forgot to uh, to spend an action to deal with it. So she now has the price of failure. Um, this could, this could be problematic because it's going to cause a doom to go on the agenda. I'm not so concerned about the damage and horror, but um, yeah, it's price of failure. That's going to be a problem. So let's see. We're we're good here. So let's go into our storyline. Okay. So we. The followers of the sign have not found their way forward, so we're going to go down here. Over the course of the next few days, or I guess weeks in our case, because we took a little side trip to the Excelsior Hotel, you delve into the evidence you've collected, hoping to find any information regarding Daniel Chesterfield, a stagehand during the previous production of The King in Yellow. As far as you can tell, he is the only surviving member of that production's cast and crew. 
The rest of them, that is, those for whom you can find any records at all, disappeared or died soon after opening night, in a variety of fashions connected only by their morbidness, freak accidents, suicides, and vanishings. It would seem that Daniel is your only lead if you are to investigate further. According to the records you found, he was admitted to Arkham Asylum many years ago. All documentation about Daniel's treatment seems to end there. You're unsure if he's even still alive. Perhaps he was cured and released. You were hoping to avoid this, but there seems to be only one way to find out. You collect your belongings and head downtown towards Arkham Asylum. As you enter the asylum, you stop to speak with the receptionist. Though you feel your body urged to step deeper into the clutches of this madhouse, he gives you a confused expression as you tell him of the King in Yellow and of Daniel. But at your insistence, he pours through his file cabinet, eventually pulling out a stark white folder. Inside is a wealth of information about the patients admitted to the asylum, medical records, psychic val psychiatric evaluations, and the like. You recognize a few of the faces as he flips through the pages. Daniel Chesterfield, yes. He is admitted under the special care of Dr. Mintz, but you can't see him. His level is restricted to staff only. You argue and insist to be let into the patient wing, knowing that Daniel must hold the key to understanding what is really going on. The receptionist gives a pitying smile and relents, nodding to the security guards nearby. Oh, of course, of course, he says with all the honesty of a street peddler. I will schedule a meeting for you with Dr. Mintz so you can speak with him about Daniel. These gentlemen will see you in. Relieved that you will soon get the answers you seek, you are escorted into the patient wing of Arkham Asylum. Okay, so in our campaign log, we did manage to interview Constance before the uh, 1452 Atlantic Avenue, um, you know, got a little, uh, the party really started. So um, let's see what happens here. You recall that Constance had told you when you spoke with her, you recall what Constance had told you when you spoke with her during her hellish dinner party. She and other members of the cast and crew had been told by the director, Nigel Engram, to take some sort of oath. At first, she had written it off as the whim of an eccentric artist, something Mr. Engram did as a strange formality to unite and strengthen the bonds of cast and crew. And to his credit, she claimed that it had worked. Ever since they had taken his strange oath, she and other members of the troupe felt much more confident and full of spirits. Perhaps Daniel had a similar experience during the last production of The King in Yellow. You must speak with him about this. Okay, so what this is going to do is he's going to give us an, ac uh, an extra as asset um, that's going to be worth two sanity. So um, that's that's pretty nice. A little bit of damage reduction there. Okay, so something else that's happened here. Um, we have, um, we're in standard mode, so we're going to add an additional minus three to our bag. Okay, so that means we... Um, Okay, so we have a whole mixture of zeros, ones, twos, now a three, and well, two threes, actually, and a minus four. Okay, so that's uh, that's worth noting. And while we're here, we have two tablets left over from our resolution of Echoes of the Past. So that means that our tablets are going to be minus X. X is the base shroud value of our location. So that's going to be all over the place. So we're going to have to look out for those tablets. Okay, something else that happened is we took the Onyx Clasp in um, Echoes of the Past, so we're using the really bad ones, version three. Yeah, I'm not totally, we're gonna, we're gonna find out how that is. This is, yep, because we're on our little conviction path here. All right, so we are set up and ready to go. Yep, so let's uh, take a look at what we need to do here. First, we have Agenda 1 locked inside. The patient wing of the asylum is far quieter and lonelier than you had expected. The hall reeks of chemicals and body odor. As soon as you are escorted inside, the doors behind you are closed and locked tight. Not scary at all. Okay, Act 1, Arkham Asylum. So what do we need to do? Aside from the few patients giving you a wide berth, there aren't any orderlies or doctors around to speak with. Looks like you're going to have to find Mr. Chesterfield on our own. So um, we just need to get six clues. That seems pretty straightforward. Um, six clues, That's that seems pretty doable, right? I think it's Lowell and Min. They've, they've done a good job of getting the clues so far. So they're going to start off in, you get to choose which patient wing you want to start off with. So we're going to start off in the Western patient wing. They could separate, but I think we're going to have them stick together because, you know, this is a scary place. Okay, so I think we are ready to go here. So let's, um, let's head towards drawing opening hands. Okay, let's get started. So Lola, weapon would be nice and maybe some clue gathering, but just assets in general would be pretty good right now. Okay, so let's see. We've got a Derringer. That's good. Um, I'll hang on to the Act of Desperation because, you know, that can kind of be the third Derringer shot. I'll mulligan the rest of them, though, because I think we're looking for some, like, 
Okay, there we go. Dark Horse, Magnifying Glass. All right, whoops. Oh, hello. Um, Dark Horse and Magnifying Glass. That's more what we want. Okay, so we're in a good place here to start Survivor, I think. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Over to Min. We're mainly looking for some clue gathering tools. We need to get six clues, so it'd probably be good if we can do that pretty fast. Okay, we don't get that. Oh, Grizzly Totem, that's good to see. Oops. All right, so what are we going to... We'll keep the multi-clue card. Keep that. And I'll also keep the um, some resources right here and crack the case. So we'll... Whoops. Mulligan those two and see what we get. Oh, we got a Dream Diary. Oh, that's perfect. And we got a Winging It. Also perfect. Okay, so we are ready to go here. Now let's check out where they are. They start off in Asylum Hall's Western Patient Wing. The pleasant atmosphere of the reception area disappeared as soon as Dr. Minch shut the thick iron door behind them. The temperature dropped to a clammy chill and a foul, sharp stench hung in the air. Okay, so there's no clues here, and it says here, after you defeat a, a lunatic at this location, draw a card. As they walked through the meandering stone halls of the sanatorium, Carolyn began to feel uneasy. It seemed like it would be very easy to get lost. Okay, so this looks like it's from um, the investigators of Arkham Horror probably describing... Uh, um, Carolyn's backstory. Okay, so we need to go look for six clues. I'm thinking, all right, we so the kitchen is locked and the garden is locked, so we have the yard and the mess hall to go explore, and I guess we also have the asylum halls and the infirmary to explore. Basement hall is locked as well, so I think what we'll do is we'll clear out maybe the yard and the mess hall first, and then maybe we can start heading this way. All right, so to do that, let's have, we'll just have Lola go first. Let's see, how do I want to do this? We can have her do some investigation. So let's go first action Dark Horse, even though we can't use it yet. Uh, second action, let's move and maybe we'll find some clues to get. So let's go up to the yard. The fresh air and the illusion of freedom makes the asylum's courtyard a common gathering place for patients. Through the barred windows, dead tree branches sway in the wind. Gray overcast skies trap the asylum in a dull limbo. Okay, so oh, we've got two clues here. That's good. And while investigating the yard, it gets plus one shroud for each horror on you. And then as an action, it says here, if there are no clues on the yard, you can take a damage to remember that you have incited a fight amongst the patients. Oh, yikes. Do we have to... Hmm. We have to call some chaos, I guess? Hmm. That's interesting. All right, so that was our second action. Let's go ahead and swap to Seeker, play this magnifying glass, and then we can um, investigate at four versus one as our last action. Okay, that's a minus one, so we are we will get this clue. All right, Lola's pretty um, pretty set on getting that second clue, so I think I'll have men go this way. But first things first, let's um let's get our dream diary down for sure, so we can get that started. Um, I think second action I'll move over here. Okay, what do we have? The mess hall. A wide open doorway leads to the asylum's mess hall, where patients would have their meals. It's quieter than you expected. There are no chairs scuffling, dishes clanking, or patients speaking with one another. Rows of tables are covered in dirty dishes and stale food. You get the feeling they look... They took mess too literally here. Oh man, this is this is creepy. This is kind of like Resident Evil, where you wander all wander around and there's like nobody around, but lots of like messes. Okay, so... Shroud 2 with four clues on it. Oh, that's good, because between this location and that location, that's going to be all six clues that we're going to need. However, after you successfully investigate the mess hall, choose and discard a card from your hand. Okay, so we're going to have to try to scoop up as many clues as we can in one action. All right, that was our second action. So I think what we'll do is if we use our deduction, yeah, and then we can discard the winging it, and then next turn we can use the winging it to get the other two clues. So that actually works out decently well. All right, third action, we'll investigate at five versus two then. Uh, we'll trigger min to be at six versus two. Okay, that's a zero, so we have to discard the winging it, but we get two clues. Okay, so that works out pretty well. All right, that is going to be all our actions. All right, so now we'll go to upkeep. Okay, what do we get here? A daring. All right, so if you run into any bad guys. I'll take a resource because I think I want to play the derringer, and then we'll turn on the dark horse. Okay, over here, we'll get an inquiring mind and a resource. Okay, so that'll be handy. All right, new turn. We are at one doom out of... Two. Oh, only two. Okay, and let's see what kind of nasty encounter cards we get. All right, here we go. The Sign of Hastur. Attach the Sign of Hastur to either the current agenda or the current act. 
Each time an investigator takes one or more horror, he or she takes an additional horror. I see. Um, let's put it up there because I think that's gonna, yeah, that's that's gonna go away next turn. This might go away next turn, but that's definitely going away next turn. All right, what do we have here? Bleeding walls. Test willpower to X for X is the shroud value of your location. So we're currently at a four versus two right now. Um, I think I'll just take that straight. That's a, that's a tablet. Tablet is minus two. Okay, so we're fine. We would have had to lose an action and take a horror, two horror, thanks to the sign. All right, so all we have to do is just get some clues and I guess advance. Maybe I'll advance next turn when we have more, um, when we have like actions to deal with the fallout. Okay, so I guess let's have Lola go first. Um, we can get this clue. That's locked. I guess we, she can also uh, incite a fight amongst the patients. Probably better to do that now than later. Okay, we'll do that. So, yeah, first action. Yeah, we'll um, investigate it four versus one. Super success. So I get the clue and I get to change roles. Yeah, I'll become a, I'll become a um, survivor, why not? Okay, so not much to do, but incite a fight amongst the patients. All right, I'll do that. So I'll take a damage to do that. Okay, so we have to remember that we have incited a fight. So I'll, uh, whoops, make a note of it right here. Oh, not the, okay. Now what? Could go up there. Let's see, I could, I think I'll just draw a card and get ready to advance. Yeah, we don't have much else to do right now. Ooh, what have you done? Okay, parlaying costs an additional action if we have to do that. All right. Min, let's grab these two clues. First, that comes to my hand. All right, so if I play winging it, I can discard maybe the essence of the dream because it doesn't really go away. And that seems like a plan. Okay, uh, but I think I'll go first action draw. Okay, unexpected courage. All right, second action, let's play the grizzly totem. Yeah, since we have enough money for it, get that set up. And then third action, we'll play winging it from the bin here. So we're going to be at four versus one. All right, that feels pretty good. A minus two, success. So we have to discard a card from hand. We'll do the essence of the dream. Shuffle this back in. And then we get two clues. So we are ready to advance. I think I'll advance at the beginning of next turn. All right, so that was second action. I'll go ahead and play crack the case as well to get two resources. All right, and then third action. Let's see, I have a feeling that advancing the act is gonna unlock the kitchen. So let's just draw a card and get ready to do that. Ooh, shortcut, that's handy. Okay, so that's all our actions. Um, we'll go to upkeep. So draw a card and take a resource. All right, good. So that way we could afford to play either the Derringer or the Derringer. I'll probably end up playing the Rogue Derringer at this point, because it's got three bullets. Eh, probably this one, because it's that one hits more reliably. And I've got an act of desperation for when that runs out. Okay, over here, we get a glimmer of hope and a resource. Okay, so that'll be useful to, uh, you know, boost things. All right, new turn. We are at two doom out of two, so that goes away. And let's see what happens. The patience. Speaking with the patients is proving more difficult than you had assumed. They eye you cautiously and refuse to answer any of your questions, backing away or fleeing if confronted. Either they're not used to guess or something about you is causing them a considerable amount of distress. Some act like animals backed into a corner and you think at any moment they might strike. Okay, so shuffle the encounter discard pile and each of the lunatics into the encounter deck. Okay, let's take care of that. Okay, let's uh, let's cut the deck, put some lunatics in the middle, give, whoops. Give that a shuffle, put that on top, give that a shuffle. Okay, now we're like really shuffled there. Okay. And then the lead investigator must randomly choose an enemy from the monster pile and place it beneath the act deck without looking at it. Okay, so we're gonna seed this monster, I guess, for later. Yeah, somehow. Okay, so we move on to agenda two, torturous descent. The longer you spend in this hellish place, the more you want to leave. Already it has felt like days. You fear that if you are stuck here much longer, you will become like the patients, a husk of your former self, unruly and dangerous. What is going on here? I guess the nightmare realm makes us like, I don't know, maybe it's like stretching time for us or something, or maybe it's just the energy of the place just sapping our energy. 
Okay, so let's go to encounter cards and then we'll uh, probably advance the act. Okay, so we've got a young psychopath. So, okay, so we either take a horror or give her plus three fight. Uh, I think I'm going to evade her because we don't have a weapon right now. So I'll give her plus three fight and we'll plan to evade. Yeah, we've got a daring to evade with. That'll work. And over here, we've got a straight jacket. Okay, put straight jacket into play in your threat area as an asset that takes up a body slot and two hand slots. Return each asset in those slots to your hand. What are you doing? I'm not crazy. Okay, why do we have a straight jacket on? Who's putting that on us? Okay, so the dream diary goes back to hand, which is a shame because essence of the dream, we won't get it this turn. Okay, so let's start by advancing. Yeah. Okay, since that's the one thing we actually really need to accomplish here. Okay, so we spend our six clues and we have key to the basement. Turning a corner, you nearly bump into a nurse with light brown hair and sharp features. You tell her about the violent patients and the strange things you've seen, but she doesn't listen. When you inquire about Daniel, she informs you that he is a patient of Dr. Mintz and that he resides in the secured basement level. Unfortunately, she refuses to let you into that area of the asylum. Okay, so it sounds like we have some decisions to make. Um, I guess we have an opportunity to, to either intimidate her with combat of four, steal the keys from her with combat, with not combat, uh, athletics of four, uh, persuade her with intellect of four, and if we can't do any of those, we knock her over and grab the keys. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go one at a time. All right, so Lola is at a three versus four on all of these. Um... She can use active desperation to um, try to intimidate her. Okay, Min, let's see, she's at four versus four on persuasion. Yeah, and if I can put just one question mark, whoops, <laughs> whoops, I'll put one, and if I put one question mark in there, then she can do that and that, and then use the Min ability, and that would put her at seven versus four. Okay, I like this plan. So we'll pitch in Grimler of Hope, we'll activate Grizzly Totem, and we'll activate Min. So we're at seven versus four for persuasion. Okay, zero. Okay, so we persuade her to give us the keys. All right, that works out pretty well. All right, what happens? Okay, so it looks like we just uh, advanced to Act 2A. Okay, so we're going to advance to Act 2A, the really bad ones. Okay, so we're ready to start Act 2, the really bad ones. Daniel is somewhere in the secured basement where the most dangerous patients are kept. Now that you have the key, you can explore this area of the asylum. Okay, so now that we have the key, we can ignore the text on unrevealed side of the Arkham Asylum locations, such as the garden, the kitchen, and the basement hall. I'm guessing that's where we need to go, the basement hall. All right, so we need to find the patient confinement location with Daniel Chesterfield. Okay, so we're looking for Daniel. Uh, we don't actually need to get clues. And um, yeah, we're ready to go. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is I think we're going to clear out the kitchen and the garden of clues first. So that way we don't have to necessarily have to come back. So let's um, let's do that. All right, so Min, but Min, however, she's getting kind of separated from Lola. And if I feel more comfortable with the Dream Diary out because this will help her evade. So let's just, I'll just have Min spend three actions to get rid of the, the jacket and get out her Dream Diary again. So that way she's better able to evade. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, Lola, she needs to evade this young psychopath, I think. And then I probably won't go up to the garden because then I'd have to come back down and deal with the psychopath again. Okay, that seems fine. Maybe we can have Lola start heading to like the infirmary or something. All right, so right now we are at three versus three. We'll use daring to go to six versus three. Very nice. Okay. That's a, ooh, that's a super success. Okay, so we'll have her swap. Yep, she can stay a survivor. We'll evade and draw a card thanks to daring. Okay, so that was first action. Second action, if I went up there, I'd have to come back down again. All right, so second action, let's get the Derringer into play. Okay, so now Dark Horse is turned on. All right, and third action, let's um, take off away from the Psychopath, the uh, Cat of Ulthar. She, uh, she's looking for some, I think, some snuggles or some food. I'm not totally sure yet, but she seems to have quieted down. All right, Min here. We've already done her turn, so let's, um, let's, go, to, let's go to enemy phase in which nothing happens, so we'll do upkeep. Okay, so... Yeah, maybe we'll go up to the garden later. I just didn't want to have to go up there, work with it, come back down, deal with her again. Yeah, it felt inefficient. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to upkeep. Whoops, not not encounter cards. 
upkeep cards and resources. Okay, let's see. We've got to take the initiative. Always nice to see. And I won't take a resource because that way Dark Horse stays active. Yeah, if we need some resources, we have active desperation. Okay, over here we get an inquiring mind and a resource. Okay, so we're gonna have a lot of question marks um, moving along here. All right, new turn. Oh, whoops, I was supposed to reset that. So uh, we're at one doom out of seven, and let's see what we get. Okay, gift of madness. So Lil is not gonna be able to trigger action abilities on locations. Okay. Oh, that's gonna include things like the yard. Okay. So Lil's gonna have to get rid of that before she can do any more of those tasks. And Min's got clouded memory. He must either forget something an investigator has remembered from an ability on a location. All right, we haven't remembered anything, so I guess we just have to take a whore and give it surge. Okay, I guess we'll just do that. All right, let's see what we've got here. Whisper visions in your mind, horrors. Okay, so she has to take a play action or she's gonna take a direct damage and a direct horror. Okay, hmm. All right, so I think what we'll do is we'll have Min go first and we'll check out the kitchen. So she gets her essence of the dream and we'll go first action, move into the kitchen. Okay, what do we have here? Okay, we've got two clues. It's only two shroud. And uh, while there are no clues in the kitchen, we can test willpower at two. And, and if we succeed, we can remember that we set a fire in the kitchen. Dirty dishes fill the sinks and cover the countertops. An unidentifiable sludge boils on the stove. Yeah, how very Resident Evil. Okay, so we've moved. Um, we don't have any multi-clue ability, so I guess we'll just investigate twice, and then I guess we'll just take a damage and a horror. Seems fine. All right, second action, I'll investigate at four versus two. Okay, oops, super success. We get the clue. All right, third action. Yeah, I'll investigate again at four versus two. Zero. All right, so that we succeed at that as well. Okay, and then at the end of our turn, we did not take any play actions, so we'll lose that, take a damage and a horror. All right, over to Lola. I guess we'll just start heading east towards the infirmary. Let's see here. First action, we'll go here to the eastern patient wing. Okay, so, oh, this has got two shroud and two clues. And after you end your turn here, you can take a horror and gain two resources. I'd rather not. Okay, so first, but two clues are pretty nice. Um, I think I'll investigate once and then check out the infirmary. Seems fine. So I'll investigate at five versus two. Feels pretty good. That is a minus two, so that's a success. Okay, yeah, I don't want two resources right now, so I think I'll just take my third action to go here. The scratched plaque on this wooden door reads infirmary. This must be where the doctors treat their patients. Our methods are proven. Oh, it's worth a victory point. That's nice. Okay, so it's shroud through two clues. Okay, fair. And as an action, we can heal a damage and take a horror, or heal a horror and take a damage. Okay, I guess, you know, patching yourself up. All right, so that is... Yep, that's everything. Um, she does not hunt, so we're all set there. Let's um, draw cards and gain resources. Okay, that's an enchanted blade. Very nice, but I won't take a resource. I mean, I could to play fine clothes, but we haven't seen any parlay checks, so I think I'll hang on to that for later. I could use the soak, but maybe later. All right, over here, we get another glimmer of hope. That's nice to see, and a resource. Okay, so new turn. We go to two doom out of seven, and let's get encounter cards. Okay, what do we got? Walls closing in. Test willpower at X, where X is the shroud value of your location. Okay, if you fail, you must take a horror for each point you fail by, or randomly choose an enemy. All right, so I guess we'll spawn a monster up there somewhere, which could be bad. Okay, so the difficulty is three, and we're currently at a four. Um, I think I'll put unexpected courage into this. Yeah, so we'll be at six versus three. That feels pretty good because now we cover the tablets. Minus three, glad I did that. Okay. Over here, what do we have? Oh, we have a maniac. Okay, so we're gonna have to do some evasion here. So she takes a damage and the maniac takes a damage. All right, we've dealt with all the clues. We need to evade the maniac, set a fire in the kitchen and leave. All right, so because of that, let's have Min go first. All right, so if she evades, she's at, although if Lola go first, not. Nah. Okay, yep, we'll have Min go first. Okay, we can't use our Inquiring Minds, so let's do, we'll use Essence of the Dream on the Evasion test. 
What's our shroud? Two? Okay, so tablets are minus two. We're at two versus one. Yeah, we'll commit this. And this is yeah, the main skill test we're gonna make. So we'll go two. So we got four. Let's go to five on this one. Minus one. So we successfully evade the maniac. Okay, so now we're gonna make this willpower test and then leave. Alright, second action, we'll make a willpower test. We're at four versus two. Put the glimmer of hope in and trigger min to go to six versus two. That feels pretty good. That's a minus two. We succeed at that. So we have set a fire in the kitchen. Okay, that's two things done. All right, I guess we're causing some mayhem here. Third action, we'll leave. Head over to the mess hall. I've got this shortcut in my hand, but I'm gonna save that for probably probably the Eastern patient wing because I have a feeling we're gonna be moving in and out of there a lot. All right, so she's evaded the maniac. That's pretty good. She's taken a bit of a beating. I hope she draws an ally soon. All right, Lola, she just needs to get these clues. And I guess, but I don't want to head out though, because I don't want to take horror and gain resources. So let's, um, I guess if we investigate, we're at four versus three. That's not too bad. Okay, it's not too bad. It could be better. So I'll go first action, draw. Yeah, it feels good. Okay. Second action, I'll investigate at four. Let's go, do I want to put in this magnifying glass? I kind of do. Five versus three. Minus one, that's a success, so I didn't need the magnifying glass after all. And then third action, I'll investigate again at four versus three. Minus one, that's a success. Okay, that went well. All right, so Lola has uh, gotten us a victory point. So that's pretty good. I'll swap over to, let's go to Guardian. Yeah, in case we draw like a Tetsuo or something. Yeah, if I draw a Christ of Identity, I don't want to take two horror if I can avoid it. All right, so that's all our actions. Um, there's no hunting. Yep, so we'll go to upkeep. Easy mark. Do I want to take resources? Not really. No, I don't really because my hands are full and the only things I would want to spend resources on are both um, weapons. So I'll save that for active desperation, throw that away, then yeah, grab one of those. Okay, over to, over to Min. Another shortcut. Okay, so we can just blanket a couple of the shortcuts, probably here in the basement hall and here in the Eastern patient wing. That seems seems pretty neat. All right, new turn. We are at three Doom out of seven, and we'll draw some encounter cards. Okay, we have, oh, another, okay, we've got an enemy. We've got a Maggot Swarm. Okay, so this is gonna follow us around. So it's gonna follow us into that, uh, that patient wing, but we could just let it stay there. That seems like a plan. Yeah, we can like evade it, leave, and then let it hang out there. Although it might be a good idea to shoot it now before it gets out of control. And over here, another straight jacket. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so what do we do? To let's see. I think I'll let Min set up our. Uh... Since this Lola's about to catch up with Min, I think I'll let Min set up some uh, our shortcut roller skates. So if she goes move here, move here, then she could shortcut, go down here, and then from there, I'm um, not sure what we'll do. Last action, yeah, maybe draw a card or something. Okay, so let's have Lola go first. I think I'm gonna shoot the maggot swarm so it doesn't follow us around and get clogged up in the, you know, in the halls. Let's see, Min could investigate there. It's only when you end your turn. Okay, so we'll have Lola shoot this. First action, we'll shoot the Maggot Swarm. We're going to be at three, four, five, six versus three on this. Okay, so we've got the tablets covered. Okay, that's two damage. It's dealt with. All right, second action. I guess second action go here, third action go there. Um, now that I think about it, I'm going to roll this back a little bit. I am going to let Min go first, and here's why. If I go first action move, Second action move. Okay, we're gonna play a shortcut. Okay, then third action move. All right, so what happens here? We head into the basement hall. Dank air drifted out of some of the darker hallways. Carolyn asked, do some of these passageways lead underground? Nurse Heather nodded. It's a very old building, doctor. And yeah, looking at that, it looks like, this looks like uh, Silence of the Lambs, this basement hall here. It's all dank and like just a row of cells. Yeah. Okay, so what happens when we get here? Oh, it's uh, four shroud and two clues, and it's a victory point. 
So we're gonna we're definitely gonna go for those clues. All right, after it's revealed, we put the four set aside patient confinement locations into play. A cramped stone staircase leads deep underground to the basement level of the asylum. Cries and howls of anguish torment you from behind the hall's many iron doors. You can't imagine what it would be like to live your days in this place. Yuck. Okay, so we're going to spawn these four patient confinement locations. One, two, three, four. Okay, and they are gonna have location connectors. Okay, so there we go. We, uh, we are all set. Okay, so that was all of Min's actions. And then I'll finish off by playing another shortcut. And we could have her move into one of these. Or we can have Lola move into one of these. Let's see. Yeah, we'll have Min move. Okay, so it says here that in, in order to enter the patient confinement, you have to spend a clue. The heavy metal door is firmly shut and locked from the outside. The thin slit that would allow you to peer inside the cell is stuck. Okay, so we have no idea what's in there. Looks pretty gross, though. It's got, like, blood and sketches, and yeah, that's pretty gross. Yeah, that's this man. This is all very Resident Evil. You know, it's like everything's all grimy and bloody. Well, this one's more like Silent Hill. You know, these these patient confinement rooms where it's like ridiculously bloody and slimy. I mean, that looks more Resident Evil. That looks Silent Hill. Resident Evil, Silent Hill. I guess we could have Min go into one of them. Although, what if she encounters something? Uh, yeah, I think I'll have her park herself here. Okay. Lola, she first action, we um, defeated the Maggot Swarm. So and the reason why I did that is now Lola can you know cruise on through on roller skates. So second action, let's uh, move, then shortcut. Okay, then we'll shortcut again. And we'll I don't know, check out one of these. Uh, let's go here. Okay, so, oh, we had to spend a clue to do that. So what do we have here? Shroud 5. One clue, it's an occupied cell. We can test strength at two to release the patient here from his bonds. If you succeed, he howls like a wolf and tears through the basement. Remember that you have released a dangerous patient. So if uh, if I'm not wrong, I actually think this is a reference to Wolfman Drew from uh, Night of the Zealot and Midnight Masks. It'd be kind of cool if it is. Okay, so we've got that. We've gone, we've... We still have an action left. We can't actually take the strength test unless we spawn a monster. I'd rather not do that. So I guess I'll leave that for Min. So I guess uh, we don't need, really need to get this clue because I think we have enough clues to like open up the pa all the patient confinements. So I think we'll just have Lola come back. All right, so then I guess in the end that was kind of a waste, but you know, we're all set up, we're ready to go. Lola can take on some baddies while Min's still in her straight jacket. All right, so that's gonna be all our actions. Uh, we have no hunters. So let's uh, let's get upkeep, get another fine close. I will not take a resource still because I have yet to see any parlays. And Min gets a card and a resource. Okay, new turn. Oh, beast refresh. We are at four doom out of seven. All right, time's starting to tick down now. Okay, we have, ooh, a mad patient. So this is gonna spawn in the nearest asylum halls. All right, when you attack the mad patient, take a horror. Sometimes the most terrifying of foes is one's own mind. Yeah. All right, so that's going to be waiting for us when we get back up there. Okay, and over here, we've got Dance of the Yellow King. Okay, so the, if she fails this, this patient's going to come down and attack her. I guess I'm not too worried about that. So I guess we'll test at four versus three. Yeah, I'm not too worried. Minus two. Okay, that's a failure. Okay, so this will come down, engage, and attack her for a damage. Okay. Yeah, this, I mean, Lola can take it out. She'll take a horror, but it clears it out for later. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to have Lola go first, actually. We're going to deal with this patient. All right, so first action, we'll shoot the patient. We are at three, four, five, six versus two. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good. It's supposed to send some we've covered tablets. Uh, we got always got to watch out for that. Oh no, that's gonna shoot Min for two damage. Yuck. Okay, that's uh, yeah, that's a uh, a uh, that's a tentacle with consequence. Fortunately, we get our ammo back because it's the Derringer. 
All right, second action, let's try again. Okay, that's a success. All right, so we deal with this patient. Oh, it's each time you attack. Ugh. So we've taken two horror from that. Yuck. All right, I wish I could have gotten off the straight jacket as my third action, but alas, not. Let's see. I don't want to take a resource. Don't really want to enter any of those locations either. Um, I think I'll probably arm up again. So I think I'm going to play Easy Mark as my last action. Okay, so we gain two resources and we get a card. Ooh, Peter Sylvester. That is good to see. That is actually really good to see. All right, so that's Lola. Over here. I think let's arm up a bit more. We're going to spend two actions to get rid of the straight jacket, and then third action, let's get let's play the Dream Diary again. Man, those straight jackets, they soak up your actions. Okay. Enemy phase, not much happens. Okay, so failing that willpower task was actually uh, pretty awful. Ooh, wait, I could shortcut somewhere. Yeah, I can shortcut down here, and then maybe next turn she can uh, try to release the patient from his bonds. That seems good. Okay. So no hunters, so we'll get cards and resources. Card, and let's take a resource, because I think we're going to play Peter Sylvester next turn. I have too many cards, and I don't think I need fine clothes, so I'll discard that. Over here, we've got a magnifying glass for investigating and a resource. That's good. All right, new turn. We are at five out of seven. Okay, clock is ticking here. Let's see what we get. Visions in your mind. Okay, so we have to perform move actions, and if we don't, we take damage and horror. Okay. What do we got here? Walls closing in. Ooh. Test willpower at X, where X is the shroud value of your location, which is five. Yuck. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll use Inquiring Mind on that, because we have a clue there. So now we're at seven versus five. Let's see, the tablets are minus five, and there's really not much we're going to be able to do about that. So we're at seven minus five. Let's use the grizzly totem so we can cover the two minus threes. So now we're at eight versus five. Mm, seems fine. Success. Okay, so we don't take a ton of horror. Yeah, and I don't want to spawn another monster for later. So there we go. Okay, so we have no active monster. Oops, no active uh, baddies at this point. So I think we're going to have Min. Um, yeah, she'll grab her essence the dream. I think we're going to... Yeah, we're gonna try. We're gonna release the patient from uh, from his bonds, and then we're gonna go look for go to another location. So Min is at two versus two right now. If I burn the essence of the dream, she's at six versus two, which feels a lot better because it's um it's got four question marks right now. So let's do that. Success. Okay, so we have released a patient from the from his bonds. Okay, so that's okay. So Wolfman Drew just rolls on rolls on out of there. That was first action. Second, we'll move here. And then let's shortcut somewhere, and then we'll guess we'll maybe investigate or do something else. So we have to spend a clue to go here. Okay. All right, so this is a dreary cell. A chill gloom envelops this windowless cell. Being locked in here for a day would be torturous, let alone for months. All right, so we can test, um, we can test uh, Laura too to speak to the patient here. If you succeed, you are able to interpret her ravings. Remember that you know the guard's patrols. All right, well, we have an action left, and I'd rather not move, spend it moving back out. We're going to have to spend some actions getting clues because I want that victory point. But I think for now, I'll just make that test. Okay, so we're currently at four versus two. Um, yeah, I think I'll take that. That seems fine. Minus two. Okay, on the nose. Okay, so we, we know the guard's patrols now. All right, this is going well, I think. All right, so that was Min's turn. Okay, so what does Lola need to do? Um, definitely get Pe We're definitely gonna get Peter Sylvester into play. And I think maybe we can go scouting around for more things to do or clues. Um, Soft to Survivor, play Peter Sylvester. Okay. All right, so now if we were to investigate, we're at five versus four, which actually isn't too bad. What did I have to do here? I have to take a move. All right. Um, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to get rid of this. I'll just hang on to that. Yeah, so I guess moving is probably the best call. Okay, second action, I'll move into here. Okay, so this is Daniel's cell, and after it's revealed, advance to Act 2B. Daniel's windowless cell is hopelessly dank and grim. The walls are covered in erratic scribbling, which upon further inspection appears to be passages from the King in Yellow. 
Okay, so we're going to advance to Act 2B. All right, what happens? The tale retold. When you enter his cell, you find Daniel huddled in a corner of the room, sobbing and rocking back and forth on the ground. No mask. No mask, he stam stammers over and over. You help him to his feet and ask him what he remembers about the King in Yellow, but he interrupts you. I already told you, he exclaims frantically, his eyes wide with a yellow glow. Ooh, yellow glow, that's interesting. Don't you remember the last time you came here? I wonder if he's referring to us or referring for me to, like, Dr. Mintz? His words make no sense. You've only just arrived here, haven't you? No, 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 the man stammers, falling backward onto the dirty cot in the corner of the room. Okay, so let's think about this. Um, maybe this could explain what's going on here. We're kind of in, like, a weird nightmare realm. We have experienced the King in Yellow, and that's causing this nightmare realm to happen. It sounds like he experienced it as well. And maybe he told the story to Dr. Mintz, and maybe that's why Dr. Mintz is keeping us locked in here. That'd be interesting. Yeah. That could explain what's going on. It will never end. It will never end until he is gone for good, and he will never be gone so long as you are here. Okay, that actually... Okay, that might be what's going on here. Although I, I think it's kind of up to interpretation. Because another way of interpreting it is that we've been here for a long time, but we've just forgotten, or this is all delusion. There's all sorts of ways we can interpret this. Get me out. I want out. Daniel screams for help, but the only response is the creature that suddenly emerges from beneath his cot. Before you can react, its tendrils have wrapped around his body, devouring him whole. His final screams are muffled by the creature's enormity. Okay, so we're gonna, um, we're gonna set up for Act 3 here. Okay, we're all set up for Act 3 here. So this is the monster that was under Daniel Chesterfield's bed, the host of insanity. This guy's pretty beefy. It's got 4 combat, 4 evasion, and 8 health. It's massive and it's hunter. It's worth a victory point, which is pretty sweet. It says here, if you control the clasp of black onyx, you can parley with it. You reveal the clasp to the creature. It freezes in place, whispering a garbled prayer. Automatically evade host of insanity. Well, we don't have the clasp, so I guess we can't do that. Um, okay, so another thing we've done, we have shuffled the discard pile into the encounter deck, along with the monster we had set aside. So there's this nasty thing in the encounter deck, just wandering around the asylum, I guess. And now we go to Act 3, planning the escape. With or without Daniel, you have to get out of this place as soon as you can. Okay, so objective of the investigators to perform four of the following tasks you must advance. Okay, so we've actually already done that. Yeah, we uh, we already know the guards' patrols. We've released a dangerous patient. We've set us fire and excited a fight. So I think we just go straight into Act 4 here. Well, rather, we go straight to Act 3B, a way out. An orderly scream echoes across the hall. Within moments, an alarm rings loudly throughout the institution. Nurses and guards rush through the asylum in a desperate attempt to control the situation. You feel dazed, and your vision is spotty, as though you've been struck by something heavy. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe we actually did get struck by something heavy. The walls blur together and twist. Creatures begin to emerge out of crevices and corners that did not exist before. Okay, so the Night Row Realm is being, like, dialed up to 11. Okay, so we're gonna, we would just shuffle, you know, the deck again. All right. And we didn't have three monsters stacked up there, so nothing else happens. Okay, so we're gonna go straight to Act 4, No Asylum. All hell has broken loose. All right, so the garden gains action. If there is no ready enemy in the garden, we can resign. Finally, a way out. Okay, so we just need to get to, we just need to get out of here by going to the garden. All right, we've got some obstacles in our way. We've also got this thing. Um. So yeah, that's all we got to do. We just got to get out of here. All right, so we've got this thing. Um, Lula has one action left. So the only thing for her to do right now, I think, is evade it. So right now she's at five to evade versus four. Um, if I put in one more pip, that'll cover a lot of tokens. So I'll put in the fine clothes. So now we're going to be at six versus four. That covers exactly like it covers that tablet. All right, so it's evaded. All right, so that is everything. Okay, um, did I play Peter already? I can't remember if I swapped this turn. Okay, well, I guess if I draw a crisis identity, I'm going to take some horror. I moved. Yeah, so that's good. I think I went play Peter move and evade okay so what do we do um enemy phase nothing bad happens so this is going to refresh and now we're going to go to upkeep okay um that's good we have eight cards in hand do i take a resource i don't think so don't need it over here we've got a lucky 
and three resources. So we're in pretty good shape over here. Okay, new turn. We'll go to six doom out of seven. So bad things are going to happen pretty soon here. And let's see what kind of awful things we get. Walls closing in. Okay, so we have to test willpower where X is, um, X is two. We're currently at a five on willpower, so I think I'll just take it straight. Minus two. Okay, so we we succeed. Over here, we've got whispers in your mind hatred. Well, visions in your mind hatred. So we have to perform a draw action. If we don't, we take a damage and a horror. Okay, that's kind of awful because we don't have a lot of damage left. All right. Yeah, we, we don't, so we're going to have to be careful here. All right, so Lola, she's not in really good shape to fight this thing, so I think I'll just evade it, and we'll just start leaving. Okay, so right now we're one over on an evasion test. I could put in the track shoes. Other track shoes are going to help us get out of here. Yeah, that would be pretty nice. Let's see. I could start by hurling my gun at it with active desperation, gain three resources. Maybe Lola can just fight it while oh, Min gets out. That actually doesn't seem like a bad idea. We have to move for this. All right, well, let's start. Yeah, let's start by attacking it. All right, we'll use Active Desperation. We're going to be at... Or do I evade it first and then throw it, throw, hurl something at it? If I evade it, I'm at five versus four. Could you take the initiative? Seems like a plan. All right, we'll go to five, six, seven, eight versus four. That's a success, so it's evaded. All right, second action. Now we'll use our act of desperation to hurl this Derringer at it. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven versus four. That feels pretty good. Minus one. All right, so we'll do two damage to our host of insanity and gain three resources. Third action, we're going to swap to Mystic and arm up with an Enchanted Blade so we'll be able to deal with it next turn. Okay, so that is all three of our actions. End of our turn, we're going to take... We didn't take a move action, so we're going to take a damage and a horror. Okay, so I think we're in good shape to uh, maybe finish this thing off next turn. Uh, it's going to work out, I think. All right, over here. Um, we have to draw or we're going to take some damage, so let's not take damage. So first action, draw. Oh, nice. That'll put some soak on the board. We'll draw two more cards by playing in a lab assistant. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I'll put this magnifying glass into play and then third action, move out. Do I want to use shortcuts? Yeah, I think I'll shortcut down here so that way um, Lola can protect her from uh, like a monster that shows up. Okay, I mean, the other possibility is I can that'll cause her to take horror, but yeah, she doesn't really need the resources. Yeah, so if we hang out here, she'll be able to uh, help out Lola. Okay, so we've taken that, so we're good. All right, we have no active enemies, so this is going to refresh itself, and we'll go to upkeep, card, and no resource. Yeah. Over here, card, up. Oh, we lose the uh, magnifying glass for um, the king in yellow. Oh, we were supposed to have the essence of the dream in hand. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and with the king in yellow. We'll probably use that on an evasion test next turn. Yeah, it seems like a plan. I don't, yeah, I think we have enough. Yeah, we can use Inquiring Mind and... All right, that'll work out. We'll see how it goes, though. All right, that's the end of the turn. So now we're going to go to a new turn. Seven out of seven. So here comes the bad stuff. Okay, what happens? The yellow sign... In the back of your mind, a force beckons. Have you seen it? It calls to you. Glimpsing something in your peripheral vision, you turn and find a familiar symbol peering back at you wherever you look. It is etched upon the doors, drawn on the walls, painted on the patient's canvases. You cannot escape it. Okay, so it looks like we have a second nasty monster in the encounter deck. Okay, let's give this a nice cut. And let's uh, stick it in the middle. Okay, so one thing I've learned is that the Tabletop Simulator Shuffler is a little buggy. So the, so if you can, I suggest uh, making sure you don't know what the top card is before you start shuffling, because um, there are decent odds that would st uh, what's on top stays on top. Okay, so we did not slay Constance, so she's going to spawn in the garden. Okay, Constance Dumaine, a little too sociable. What's wrong? Aren't you enjoying yourself? Okay, so she is pretty tough. Four to, four to attack, but 
only one to evade, so we're going to survive by evading her. She hunts, and uh, she deals two damage with her attack, which is kind of nasty, especially since Min only has, what, two health left? Okay. So what do we need to do now? Agenda three, his domain. Flee. Flee while you still can. All right, so for whatever reason, we have to place enemies beneath the act deck. They just go straight into the encounter deck. Well, monsters. Yeah. All right, so that... We have our objective. We just need to head, get to the garden and resign. Okay, so encounter cards. Let's see, we've got a straight jacket. Ooh, this is bad timing because we were about to attack this thing, and now this all goes back to our hand. Yuck. That is a problem. Oops. Yep, because there goes our weapon. Yikes. All right, and over here, Dance of the Yellow King. Are there any lunatics? Yeah, the closest one would be one, two, three, four. So this will jump on top of us if she fails. She's currently at four versus three. Um, I'll put this. You know, I'll just take it straight. We've got a lucky. Okay, four versus three. Success, okay. Good there. All right, so Lola needs to uh, recover a bit. This is gonna cost her a turn. Okay, so maybe Min can evade this thing and then maybe get rid of the straight jacket, and then Lola can play the Enchanted Blade and start attacking. All right, that seems like a plan. All right, so we'll have Min go first. We'll try to evade this thing. Can we get up to six question marks? Okay, that's two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have six question marks on three cards, which we needed to put into it. All right, so we are at eight versus four. Pretty good. Minus two? Okay, so we successfully evade, and we deal with the king in yellow. Okay, and that's gone over there. All right, so that's pretty good. That was our first action. And I think, yeah, oh, maybe we can't get rid of the straight jacket because we got to draw a card for this. Yeah, she can't really afford to take much more damage. Um, you know what? Fortune favors the bold. Let's just do it. All right, so... Second action, third action, since that's in the threat area, we'll um, get rid of that. Okay, that's all her actions, so she's going to take a damage and a horror. Okay, so on thin ice here. Okay, over here, that means Lola is free to go improvisation. Okay, we'll swap to Mystic, put this down for free. Oh, yeah, swap to Mystic, draw a card, and then put this down for free. Okay, so that was our first action. We now have four charges. Okay, so if I just... If I just hit him for two, three, three damage strikes, we can take him out right now. I think that sounds pretty good. Okay, uh, another possibility is I can do two damage strikes, and then next turn I can finish it off with another two damage strike. That'll save us one ammo. Um, well, I've got a Derringer here, so I think I'm just going to go for it. All right, so second action, we'll attack. All right, we're going to be at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight versus four. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, that's a success, and then we'll do it again at 8 versus 4. That's a success. Okay, so we've dealt with the host of insanity. All right, so that so now we have plenty of time to get out of here, I think, because we have no active bad guys where we are. Oh, that's refreshed. That's going to be all three all three of Lowell's actions. Okay, so Min's on thin ice right now with, um, with health, so she's going to need to stick with Lola, I think. Yeah, unless Lola gets her Hallowed Mirror. All right, we haven't used our our, um, our swap for the round. We only used our free one. So I think I'll swap to Guardian at this point. No, Rogue, so I can play that next turn. So that way I can get down the Derringer. Okay, that works. Okay, so we have no we have an active enemy in Constance. Yeah, we're going to have to deal with her as well. All right, upkeep, card, and I'll take a resource. Ooh, Tetsuo can block damage for Min but then I'd have to lose Peter. Yeah, I'll take the resource so I can go easy mark and then Derringer. Okay, Min, card, and resource. So Lucky's are nice to see right now since he's on thin ice. New turn, we're at one Doom out of eight, and let's see what we get. Okay, this is getting pretty tense now because, oh, spawn of Hali. Okay, so there were two monsters in the encounter deck and that is one of them. Fortunately, if we evade it, we can just leave it. It does not hunt. Okay, it's pretty beefy. Four to attack, but we're not going to attack it. We're just going to evade it and go. And then um, 
Okay, so we're probably going to take a horror when we evade event when we evade this by two or less because yeah, we need to get a result of five to avoid the horror. Okay, that means Min's um, logical reasoning will probably come in handy to heal that horror. Oh no, no, we can put it on Peter. What am I thinking? All right, over here. Oh, hello. Asylum Gorger spawns in the basement halls. Hunter, it cannot make a tax of opportunity. Oh, it can't make a tax of opportunity. That's handy. Oh, it's not massive though, so it still sticks to you. It cannot make a tax of opportunity. It cannot attack during the same phase it moved from its hunter keyword. Wow, we just drew both of the monsters. All right, well, this is the this is the toughest stuff the encounter deck can throw at us. So I think we're just gonna start taking off. All right, how are we gonna do that? Do we want to evade this thing? Do we even have to? All right, well, we're definitely gonna evade this. Let's start with that. So we're at five, oh, we're at four versus two to evade because of this resource. Um, I think we're kind of covered. Yeah, I think we'll be okay at four versus two. Yeah, let's do it. Minus three, that's a failure. Okay, second action, let's go again. Oh, I wanted to use my right, I think I might have. Yeah, I probably should have pushed into that one. Yeah, four versus two. Second action, we'll go again. Minus four. Oh, wow. I'm glad I didn't pitch into that one. All right, well, I definitely got to pitch into one of these. I definitely got to succeed at this. So we'll use Min's Unexpected Courage. So now we're four over. Oh, really? Wow. Wow, three field of aids. That is always a bad sign. That is always a bad sign. Okay, fortunately, Peter can take the horror, so it's not that bad. We also got this thing coming for us. All right, well, it's not going to be able to attack. That is a nasty evasion difficulty. All right, what can Min do here? We can pull this off of Lola and evade it. And then, like, move out? No, we don't want to engage it. We don't want this thing engaged with us. Okay, so she gets this. Oh, we also want to get those two clues on the way out. Yeah, totally. We've got a deduction to do it already and everything. So maybe she can go to evade that thing. It actually seems like a plan. Okay, let's do that. Okay, first action will heal Lola. Okay, so she's no. I don't have to heal Lola. She's got Peter. She'll be okay. All right, so first action will move in here, engage this thing. Okay, we need to evade this thing. All right, uh, the shroud is four, so this is going to cause this is going to count as four question marks. So now we're at six versus four to evade. We've got the lucky, so I think we'll be okay. Six minus four, um, because that's a tablet. So we are two. Uh, we are two under. So I'll use lucky to evade it. All right, that's good. Okay, that was move act. First move, second evade, third investigate. Play deduction. Now we'll trigger Grizzly Totem and Min. So we're gonna be at four, five, six. We're at four, five, six, seven versus four. We've got another lucky if we need it. Oh, another tentacle. Wow, March of the Tentacles and minus fours. Yeah, yuck. All right, that was our third action. I think I'm gonna shortcut away to stay away from this thing because I don't want it re-engaging unless we have to. So we'll stay here. I don't want to have Constance jump on her either. Okay. All right, so that was all our actions. Um, this enemy phase, Constance is going to hunt. The spawn of Heli is going to attack for a damage and two horror. Okay. I think we'll stay rogue. Now we'll go to upkeep phase. Card but not resource. I don't think I need it. Easy mark covers me. Yeah, it kind of does. Okay, over here, card, resource. Oh, sharp vision. I can use that to go back down there. All right, so this is going to be a little dicey for a bit. New turn. I really wish I didn't fail all those skill tests. Okay, two doom out of eight. Yeah, I failed like four skill tests there. All the skill tests. All right, so we got to discard events with the total print resource cost of at least X. Do we have events? We have improvisation. We have easy mark. So improvisation is stronger, so I'll get rid of the easy mark. 
Oh, wait, I have to get rid of both of them. Crap, now I really can't afford track shoes or Tetsuo or a weapon. Okay. Because I had to lose all my my event cards. Okay, and over here we've got Madding Delusions. All right, we have no hidden cards. We don't take a horror. And then we have Gift of Madness. We can't attack lunatics. All right, that's fine. We're not planning to. All right, so we still got these clues to get. We got to evade this thing. Lola's well positioned to do both. Okay, so I think what we'll do is, since we have really no hope of affording a weapon right now, or track shoes or anything, I think I'll have Lola swap to Seeker, play this magnifying glass as a fast action. That turns on Dark Horse. So now she can evade at five versus two. That feels pretty good. Uh, now I get zeros. Okay, so that's evaded. Second action will go here, engage the Asylum Gorger. Um, I guess we'll evade him as well. Yeah, we kind of need to. Five versus four. Um, if I evade him up here, Min could help. No, she doesn't really have a good way of helping. Uh, Min can come down right now. Yes, she still won't. Yes, she actually can help. So if Min moves down with the shortcut, that means we can trigger the Min ability on Lola's committing of this Trek shoes. So we're going to be at five, six, and then use Min for seven versus four. Okay, seven versus four. That seems pretty good. Success. All right, so we need to get away from this guy before he readies. Okay, I'll stay here for now and then use the shortcut af after Min if Min successfully investigates. If I'd investigate myself, I'd be at five versus four, which might actually not be a bad idea. Yeah, I can investigate myself, and Min can pitch the sharp vision into it. Okay, that seems like a plan. Yeah, because I'm at because Lola's at five versus four to investigate. Min's at four. Okay, that seems actually really good. Okay, so Lola will investigate with her third action. Min will pitch in the sharp vision. Okay, so Min, so it means Lola's going to be at eight versus four. I have no way to boost it except with this Tetsuo. Uh, we'll use the min ability to go to 9 versus 4, and the grizzly totem to go to 10 versus 4. So good odds. Not a tentacle. So we get both clues. All right, that is nice to see. Okay. So we went move. So what did we do? We went evade, move, evade. Oh, I took too many actions there. <laughs> oh, whoops. I took too many actions. So this actually, we're going to roll this back. Okay. Right, I forgot about the move action. So evade, move, evade. Why is that? Oh yeah, Min came down to help. Right. Okay, so what we'll do is... Inst so end of her turn, Peter will heal. She doesn't have to activate this on her turn. So we'll wait for Min to... Yeah, we'll let Min grab the two clues. Sorry about that, folks. And then we'll start heading out and we'll leave this guy behind. Yeah, I'll have Lola tank the hit from Constance. Okay, that's we've got a plan. All right, so we'll have Min go. Gets the essence of the dream. First action, we'll investigate. We'll use sharp vision. Okay, so if we use sharp vision, the grizzly totem and Min, she's at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine versus four, and I really want to succeed at this. So we'll put this essence of the dream in anyway. So we are at 13 versus four. We're way over. Yeah, we're way over, we get both clues. I really wanted to succeed at that. Okay, oops. Okay, so what does this do? If you end your turn here, you take a whore and gauge your resources. All right, that's not so bad for either one of them. Okay, so she'll second action move. Lola will use the shortcut to move there because she needs to bodyguard men from, from Constance because she can't take a hit from Constance. All right, third action. Um, we're going to end our turn here. We'll take a horn and gain two resources, which is fine. So I think there's really not much to do, nothing to do, but draw a card at this point. Okay, crack the case. All right, don't really need that. Okay, so that's everything. Um, they're going to refresh. Constance is going to hunt, engage Lola, and deal... Oh, engage with Lola and deal with two damage. Oh, at the end of Min's turn, she's going to take a horror, or rather the... 
lab assistant is, and she's going to draw, draw not, not, not draw a card, gain two resources. Okay. Upkeep. Card, resource, daring. All right, that's handy. We'll not take that resource because we can't afford these two. Over here, a lab assistant and a resource. All right, so more soak. Although I got to be careful. We've still got the price of failure in there, and the price of failure could take out Min. Uh-oh. I have to be careful. I might need to play Tetsuo just to soak up some damage for Min. All right. That is a concern. These refresh. New turn. Three Doom out of eight. So let's see what we get. Hopefully we've, we've gotten both of the monsters. So there shouldn't be any more. I've got a Maggot Swarm, though. Yuck. Okay, and we've got a Mad Patient. Spawns here. And praise on the whoever has the most remaining sanity. They both have the same. Um. Yeah, we'll, yeah, that we'll have men. We'll have men take it, because she can just evade it. Yeah, she's gonna get her essence of the dream. All right, here we go. Um. Yeah, let's let's go for this. We just need to evade things and move out. That thing's gonna. Oh, that thing won't hunt us because there's no clues here. Good. That's nice. All right, so I think we're going to have Min go first. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I think we'll have Min go first. Grab her essence of the dream. First action evade. If I do this, I'm at, whoops. If I do this, I'm at four versus three. Let's go to five versus three, six versus three. Oh, that's nasty. Okay, did not another tentacle. Yuck! Six versus three, we failed. Okay, well now we're now we're in trouble mode. All right, second action. We'll we'll evade again. We'll put this daring into the test. So now we're at five versus three. Min will trigger her ability on Lola's daring to go to six versus three. Minus one. That's a success. Um, who draws a card? Lola draws a card. Okay. Ooh, haste, that's cool. All right, so that's evaded. Okay, with her third action... I uh, don't need to heal horror. I don't want to draw cards because I might get nasty nasty. Um, let's... I could investigate, crack the case, give Lola the resources. Now nah, that means this Maggot Swarm would start hunting. Okay, so she's just going to move over here. Okay, that seems fine. Okay, this is getting pretty tense. All right, Lola needs to evade, evade, and shortcut out. Okay, that seems like a plan. And then with her last action, I'm not sure what she'll do. Oh, what do we have here? Okay, don't want to take her. We don't really want to end our turn here. All right, here we go. We'll start by evading the easy one, Constance. We are at five versus one to evade. Okay, that's a success. He's evaded. Okay, we are two over to evade this Maggot Swarm, and I guess I'll just go for it, because we kind of have two chances. Minus one, okay. We successfully evade. All right, now we'll shortcut over here. Okay, so we still have an action left. I can't afford to play um, Tetsuo Mori to cover Min. So I think what I'll do is I'll take a resource, so that way I can hurry up and get Tetsuo, so that way we can cover Min's, um, cover Min's health. End of her turn, Peter heals. So it looks like Min is limping along, and Lola's trying to carry her. Okay, uh, do I stay a Seeker? I'll swap to Guardian for purposes of playing Tetsuo. Okay, um, enemy phase. Nothing happens. We have no active hunters. Oh, wait, we do have active hunters. We have this guy. We have... Nope, not him. All right, so we, we're going to have to just bla blitz through this young psychopath next turn on our way out. We might be able to get out this turn. One. Now, uh, Min might be able to, but Lola won't. Okay, here we go. Um, upkeep. Card. Resource. Yes. Card. Oh, thank God. Not the, um, not the price of failure and a resource. Yeah. Unless we already, unless we already got it. No, we didn't already get it. It's still hanging out in there. So I think we need Min to get out of here as quickly as possible because price of failure could just take her out. New turn. Let's see what we get. 
hopefully we won't get more baddies because that's what's really bogging us down right now all these evasion tests another baddie a maggot swarm and visions in your mind failure okay this can cause her a direct horror if she didn't take at least one resource action all right so that could take her out okay so i think what we need to do is if lola goes evade the maggot swarm move here evade the psychopath min can just get out and that actually seems like a good plan to be honest because min is on a ticking time clock all right so we'll have lola go first start by evading the maggot swarm we are currently at four versus three to evade I'll put in this manual dexterity so we're three over all right seems fine nice nice struck hard and ooh, evade the maggot swarm okay that's handy because maybe we can heal min no I don't have enough actions for that because this thing's gonna jump on us and Constance is gonna jump on us we need to get out of here okay Second action, go here. Uh, engage the young psychopath. We'll give her a plus three fight because we're planning to evade her this turn. Although that's not even that important. We, can aff we can't afford to take much damage, though. So that's second action, we move there. Engage that. I guess third action, we'll evade. Four versus three. I don't think I'm going to get a chance to play haste. We'll go to five versus three. Minus two. Nice. Okay, so she's evaded. My right, Lola's next turn is going to be really tight. All right, Min's turn. Um, we'll grab that, and I think, as I mentioned, we'll just move, move. Let's see what we get here. A lone statue stands sentinel over the garden. Cold wind causes dead leaves to roll gently across the garden path. Okay, so there are no clues. There are two clues here. Two guards in white uniforms stand by the gate to the garden, keeping watch. And um, we could distract the guards by getting rid of all the clues and then making an agility test but we're not going to all right we're gonna we're gonna have min bail out so that way um the price of failure won't um finish her off in fact let's check nope it wasn't price of failure but that's okay that's okay um it was a one in ten chance of just yeah also we had that to worry about so yeah we had that to worry about for finishing her off price of failure would finish her off so yeah we'll um yeah we'll just have min just bail uh, yeah bail no problem Okay, so that's all our actions. Um, now we're going to resolve hunters. So we have a hunter, we have another hunter, and those are the only hunters. Man, a lot of baddies on the board in this Act 3 here. Yeah, especially we had both of these monsters and Constants. That's a lot. All right, now we're going to go to upkeep phase where we get a card, and we might as well take a resource because now we're going to afford to spend it on things. Vicious Blow might be handy here. New turn. All right, all right, Lola, it's all on you. Five out of eight. We've got plenty of time, though. Plenty of time. Just we need to move away from. Oh, this happens. So she can. We can. We'll take a horror to Peter, and um, so that way we have the option of fighting her. Her eyes widened, and she picked up the knife. All right, but let's see what we get. Another. Oh, goes to the asylum halls. Thank goodness it's not gonna hunt us and. You know, it's not, we don't have to deal with it right now. So we need to either evade or defeat the psychopath, move, and resign. Okay, we can do this. All right. And we're going we're gonna to take the violent path because I think our, we're better at doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap to Mystic. We're going to attack her with the Enchanted Blade. And we're going to pitch in this, in, this vicious blow. So that's going to put it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 versus 2. Success! Yes, if that were a tentacle, I would have flipped the table. All right, so we defeated the young psychopath. Okay, second action, we move. Third action, let's see. Garden gains, so there's no. Oh, oh. We can't trigger those abilities on locations. Oh. All right, we're going to have to get rid of this gift of madness, and next turn, we're going to have to get out of here. Oh no. Okay, wow, this is really tight. Okay, fingers crossed. All right, that was all of Lola's actions. Move, yeah, evade, uh, attack, move, get rid of her gift of madness misery. Yeah, what is it? 
Yep, the garden gains it, so she can't trigger that. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, let's just to be sure, just to not j to unjinx myself, I'm cutting this deck. All right. So this is randomized. Whew. It's getting tight. All right. Enemy phase. Hunts, hunts, and hunts. Oh, geez. Okay, this is it. This is our last turn, because if all v three of these jump on us, we are hopeless. All right, upkeep. Card, resource. Oh, that's nice to see. If we have to evade something... Take the initiative's great for it. Whew. Oh, and we pe we heal Peter. Okay, new turn. This is it. Six out of eight. Here we go. Okay, if you have one or more hidden cards in your hand, take a horror. We don't. Oh. Even more tension. Walls closing in. Okay, so this could cause us to take horror. Um, we are at... Oh, why did I take that resource? I don't know. Okay, so we're at four versus three on this. Okay, we'll go ahead and put in take the initiatives. We'll be at seven versus three. That's a success, so that's dealt with. So all we need to do now is just resign. Wow, we made it. Wow, that was really close. Oh my gosh, that last minute discovery of that, um, of that hidden Let's see, of this hidden card preventing you from resigning? Oh my god, that is not what I wanted to see. In fact, I should, probably should have thought of that. Although it's hidden? So if it's hidden, is it... I wonder if uh, Min could have used log um, logical reasoning on it. I mean, is it considered in the threat area, even though it's hidden? Maybe? That might work. That'd be an interesting trick to keep to keep in mind for, uh, you know, for future runs of Carcosa, or for future... Um, you know, hidden terror cards, whether that works. I'll have to look that up. That would be good to know. Oh, but wow. So the, oh man, the unspeakable oath, it is a rough scenario. It is always down to the wire because, um, and as we saw here, look at this, as soon as, um, as soon as we uh, got to act three, we then managed to spawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we had an eighth um, enemy in there. There's so many. Yeah, uh, I think we had a... Oh, that was from earlier. So it's so many enemies that just jump on you at once. And if we weren't so lucky, if we weren't um, doing very, very well earlier, we'd have had even more monsters to deal with. That's... Yikes. <laughs> and it's that... I've, I've, uh, I rarely see um, Unspeakable Oath runs, um, you know, you don't roll the Unspeakable Oath. Like, you just... You barely make it or you just lose. Wow, I wish we had track shoes. Track shoes would have made things a bit more easy, a bit more um, gentle. But I think the shortcuts were really clutch um, to just save us actions going on, going in, actions moving around the patient confinement, and actions coming out. That was really key, I think. Just because look how close we were. We were um, at six out of eight doom. Yeah. Wow. Okay, we did it. Okay, so we advance the act, escape. We did not take the keys by force, so the guards are too busy p controlling the situation and restraining the asylum's patients to notice your escape. Resolution 3. Okay, where is that? Resolution 3. Okay. With the asylum staff distracted and patients running amok, you are able to slip away without being noticed. You escape deeper into the garden behind the asylum, where a two-story tall fence topped with barbed wire is all that separates you from the outside world. You have little time and need to make it far away from the asylum before the guards return and spot you. Using a straitjacket you had found inside to cover the barbed wire, you scale the fence quickly, breaking into a run as you make it to the other side. Wow, we did it. Okay, so we can record that we escaped the asylum. Okay, we only had to remember those, so we don't need that anymore. Okay. The Asylum. Nice. Okay, so now we're going to earn some uh, experience. So we have one victory point in the victor display, and let's see what we have on locations. Nothing there. One from here, so that's two victory points, three victory points, four victory points. Okay, that's that's okay. Okay, there wasn't one there, so we didn't leave any on the table. Okay. So that's uh, four victory points. We did not slay Constance. We're going to add um, Elder Things to the Chaos Bag. And then I'll, uh, I'll proceed to Lost Soul um, 
I guess uh, we'll we'll do the interlude next next video. So as as kind of a lead in an introduction to uh, the next episode. So until then, um, if you've made it this far and uh, you you know were you know gritting your teeth along with me, thank you so much for watching, and have a great night.